Just before this, the author has been encouraging the readers to have perseverance in following Jesus, acknowledging that they were very likely to have suffered persecution for their commitment to Jesus. It is faith which will not get them through it all. So in these verses, the author reminds the readers of what faith really is. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that this is seen was made from things that are not visible. Thanks be to God for this word of life. I want to thank the choir for tying in that hymn with the um, synagogue killings of last weekend, expressing solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters. I know that that um, has still been weighing on many hearts, and it is good to remember that we are not alone in this world, but are together with our brothers and sisters. On Thursday night, I got to see a talk by Father Greg Boyle. He's a priest out in L.A. who was the pastor of a little tiny dying Catholic congregation in South Central Los Angeles, uh, wedged between two housing projects, one of which for some reason was dominated by um, African-American gangs and the other which was dominated by Latino gangs and the two housing complexes were at war with each other in the mid 80s and this congregation was literally on the battleground of that war. Well Father Greg uh, took the job of being the pastor of this congregation with just a few old people uh, struggling to survive in what, of course, was a changed neighborhood from when they first started attending there. And he went on, as many of you probably know, uh, because you've maybe heard me talk about it before, to found, he and the congregation, founded Homeboy Industries, which eventually became the largest uh, gang intervention, or as actually, as Greg Boyle prefers to say now, gang member healing program in the world. They've helped tens of thousands of young, mostly young men and women from those housing complexes and indeed now from around the city find healing and change their lives. Father Greg, or Father G as uh, his uh, folks call him, or even uh, G-Dog um, as the gang members call him, is probably the greatest storyteller that I have ever heard, certainly the greatest storyteller I ever heard in person, and he's also one of the best human beings I know of. With compassion, compassion that just won't quit. It comes from such a deep well inside him. He's fundamentally convinced of the kinship of us all. Jesus prayed that we may all be one. And Father G just thinks that God is happy to answer Jesus' prayer. That we may all be one. Kinship is the fundamental state of humanity, says Father Greg. So rival gangs are not so much like bad as they are wrong. Nationalism is not so much bad as it is just wrong. Everything that divides us is not so much bad, it's just wrong. It's a poor view of what humanity is really all about. Life is not about separation and division and enemies. It's about kinship. On humanity's first full day in the Garden of Eden, first full day in the Garden of Eden, God said, it is not good that the human should be alone. It's about kinship. 
God's dream come true, says Greg Boyle, is kinship and connection, and that everybody enter into this exquisite mutuality with each other. And anybody who says otherwise is not so much bad as just wrong. It's not good for the human to be alone. Well, Greg Boyle is, of course, a friend and father to many gang members, some of whom don't have the greatest educational backgrounds, um, as he says. So they sometimes mangle the English language when they're talking with him. One guy who was a really popular ex-con who has gone on to be a speaker on behalf of Homeboy Industries in other places around the city and in, indeed around the country even, gave Father G some speaking advice. He, I guess, felt Father G needed a little improvement. So he says, yeah, Father G, when you go out to speak, you have to make sure that you get the audience on your side. So you should use some self-defecating humor no sh says Father Greg. <laughs> that, you know, it's sort of like a few years ago when I was encouraging people to sign up for a new outreach committee at my church out in Rockford and um, frazzled at the beginning of the service, I guess. I said, we need about 10 people to sign up and go visit those who are not afflicted with any church. <laughs> Jesus prayed that we may all be one. And God said on the first day of humanity that it's not good that the human should be alone. And anybody who says otherwise is not bad, just wrong. And I feel bad for them. I feel bad for them having to live in a world in which fear and enemies and division are taking for granted. People sometimes talk about Greg Boyle being a saint. One gang member heard this talk and he said, this gang member said, that if he were Pope, he would canonize Father Greg immediately. And he would get the biggest canon he could find and try to make it as comfortable as possible for him. I think Father G is able to be the man that he is because of faith. That compassion, that incredibly deep well of compassion, that sense of kinship with all of humanity comes from faith. Deep and abiding faith in God and in the way of Jesus Christ in this world. But what does that mean, really? Right? I mean, faith is one of those words that we use a lot here in church, but I'm not sure that we actually define it maybe often enough or give people the nuance and flavor and depth that it really has. I mean, it's kind of important, right? Uh, Rob earlier quoted from the third chapter of John, and, and the way Rob translated it, it said, whosoever has faith may not perish, but have eternal life. Kind of significant. So faith. Today I want to answer, really fairly quickly here in my remaining minutes, three questions about faith. And I want to see if that helps move your internal conversation about faith along. So the three questions are, what is faith? Is faith rational? Because I know a lot of you wonder about that. And because Grant quoted George Michael as we shaped this sermon series, you gotta have faith? 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 Really? So what is faith? Today's reading from Hebrew gives uh, Hebrews that um, Claudine read earlier gives us one of the lines that um, many of you may have heard before. Some of you from your Sunday school days may even remember it from years ago. 
one of the lines that we know about faith as sort of a definition, right? It says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You know, that's all well and good, and ultimately I think it's right, but I'm not sure it actually explains very much. So what I want to tell you in a little bit different words is that faith is trust that the world really is the way God says it is. Faith is trust. Faith is active trust that the world really is the way God says it is. Or to put that, actually, maybe even a little bit more the way the Bible thinks about it, the way the New Testament says, would, would say it. Faith is the active trust that the world really will turn out the way God says it will turn out. So faith works a little bit like this. So faith... Um, Grant, you're my go-to volunteer, so... And you didn't volunteer, but I'm calling you up here anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to start right here. And um, I need you to get behind... Well, actually, you know, you can just stand right there. That's fine. Just take my hand. I need you to make sure that I walk down these stairs without falling. But I'm going to... My eyes are going to be closed. Okay? 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 Yeah. All right. So... I, I have not memorized these stairs. I haven't practiced. As a matter of fact, let's make this a little more difficult. Let's do it backwards. Okay? Yeah. No, his hand's fine. Wouldn't want to get too close. Okay, so, Grant. Um, uh, you're going to have to, like, guide me. I'm just going to step boldly. I'm not going to, like, reach with my foot. So, are you ready? Okay, now, go ahead and lead. I have, I have trust in you, right? I'm, I have faith that you're going to do this for me. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. All right. Oh, you have to tell him. Oh. Like, how far? Um, no, we're going. Okay, here we go. All right. Come on, Grant, I trust you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I trust that you're not going to let me fall. Definitely do not trust me. <laughs> okay. 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 Keep coming. Keep, Keep coming. coming. Let's slide to your right because we're getting close to the railing. Maybe another step. All right. You're about three inches from the next step. Okay. How's that? Yeah, you're good. I don't know how many there are. Stop. Okay, now we're on that longer ladder step. Okay. Normal step. All right, you're like a half an inch from that. Alright. Okay. Alright, one more. One more. Right. Is that it? We're good. Yeah, we're done. Okay, good. Okay, ta da. So, the point is that at the beginning, when I refused to do it, I was trying to show that I didn't really trust him. The point being that if I don't actually begin to walk down these stairs backwards, now I can look and do it myself. <laughs> if I don't actually begin to walk down those stairs with Grant's help, then I don't have faith, I don't have trust that this little tiny situation is the way he says it is. I don't have trust that it's going to turn out okay. If I don't move, if I don't actually take the step, if I just stand there and fight with him the whole time, I don't have trust that the steps really are the way Grant says they are. And the same thing is true about our faith in God. If we don't walk out there and risk living in the world assuming, trusting, having faith that the world really is the way God says it is, then we don't have faith. Faith requires that risk. Faith requires that action. Faith requires that movement of our lives that says that the world really is the way God says it is. Or the world really will turn out the way God says it will. That's faith. That's faith. So the second question is, is faith rational? Now, I don't know if trusting Grant was rational, but um, rationality is, this is a difficult question to answer in a lot of ways because a lot of people, I think, 
um, today have a very limited understanding of what rationality really is. I, um, some of you might have seen the headline recently that you remember that um, Stephen Hawking died um, a few months, maybe even a year ago, and um, some of his writings uh, that didn't get published during his lifetime are still coming out. And one of those was just sort of the categorical um, proclamation that, and, and Stephen Hawking apparently was a little fuzzy about this during his lifetime, but um, he just came out and said in some book that's now been published after his death that he just didn't believe in God. There was just no way that such a being actually existed. And it went on to say that what he believed instead is that the entire universe was created out of nothing. <laughs> Which is like, okay, first of all, he used the word created. That was his word in his writing. And second of all, okay, what sense does it make that something came of nothing? I mean, either there is nothing or there is something. And it makes far more sense to me to believe that there is some sort of presence behind all of this, some sort of essence behind all of this, rather than nothing. And so if everything coming from literally nothing makes sense to you, if you find that to be rational, then that's okay, that's good, and all of the world out there as well. But it has a very strange understanding of the word rational. I think that we in the world today assume that things that are the most cynical, the most physical, in other words, the least trusting, those are the things that are rational. But rather, I think we need to broaden our sense of what rationality really is. It's a fundamental conviction about the nature of this world. If you believe that we are all ultimately meant to be one, if you believe in the kinship of all humanity, that's rational. If you believe that we are all separated and divided and living in antagonistic situation with each other, to me, that's irrational. Faith is rational when we expand our understanding of what rationality really is all about. And then finally, I, the third question, which is, you got to have faith? Really? As I said, this takes on a special importance because of what Rob said from the third chapter of John, that uh, whosoever has faith will not perish but have eternal life. But I sometimes wonder what we mean by the word faith in that context. I think it is true that the one who trusts that the world really is the way God says it is, is the one who finds life in this world. I think it's true that the one who believes that the world really turns out the way God says it is, is the one who finds life in this world. I think that we do need faith as that active trust in God in this world. But I'm afraid George Michael had it wrong. Because the truth is not that you got to have faith. The truth is that God believes in you even when you don't believe in God. God claims you even when you don't claim God. The truth is not that you got to have faith, but that you get to have faith. Faith is a gift. Faith is a joy. Faith is a way of life, of trust that the world really is the way God says it is. And we get to have faith because we respond to the wonderful love of God for us and for all this world. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, remember Greg Boyle now? His compassion, his deep well of compassion comes from faith. Because he understands that the world 
really is the way God says it is. The world really will turn out the way God says it will. And so we can live, not because we gotta, but because we get to live in faith in Jesus Christ every day of our lives. Thanks be to God for this wonderful gift. Amen.